now, back to Tony and Casey's Best of Food and Wine on Smooth and Easy, Sea Isle 650. Welcome back to the Best of Food and Wine. I'm Tony Gismondi. I'm Casey Wilson. <laughs> Art gets so worried that we're going to miss the mark. Uh, <laughs> we're at the 38th Vancouver International Wine Festival. Think about it. 38 years ago, this wine festival started. I went to that first tasting and tasted wine out of plastic cups. Me too. And we had water. We had acid. We had tannin. We had to taste all those out of plastic cups so that we could learn how to taste wine. And then at the very end, Robert Mondavi gave us a plastic cup of the finished wine. And uh, we thought we died and gone to heaven. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but it was, you know what? It was a really, it was a great study and discipline to, uh, it was kind of a message from Mondavi, and I think it was a good message. Like, you know what? Learn how to taste wine uh, so that you can appreciate wine. Mm -hmm. And that's how the festival started. There's 3,000 people in the room tonight. There'll be 3,500 tomorrow and the next night. Over 10 to 12,000 people through this hall in the next couple of days and 56 special events. So I'd say we learned a bit about wine. And it was how many people that first night? 125? Yeah, it was 125. We paid about $35 to go to drink water, tannin, acid. Uh, it was something else. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, our next guests are Tim Turek. He's the president. Daniel Kosman is the winemaker from Unsworth Vineyards uh, from the Cowichan Valley on Vancouver Island. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Good evening. Unsworth Good Vineyard. I don't know who's in charge of the PR, but you guys have the best winery in Western Canada. Oh, thank I you hear about much. it all day long from everybody, but actually, no. The, there's a big buzz about your wines and what's going on on the island. Uh, so I want to say congratulations on that, and I know why. Because the wines are damn good, and they're really interesting. They express the place, I think, and that's maybe part of the game. Am I close? Or? Yeah, I believe so. The, uh, the wines uh, are are not uh, competing exactly with the Okanagan. They're, uh, no. They have their own character. And uh, What makes the region so different from the Okanagan Valley? Well, I think our moderate climate and, uh, yeah. Daniel, you can speak to that a little better than I can, I think. It's a remarkably different growing region. The climate is different. The soils are different. Mm -hmm. the, the ocean influence is significant. And in the beginning, they said, no, it was too warm there. It was never going to work. Too, too cold? Too warm. In the beginning, they thought maybe it might be too warm, but too cool, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Casey, you know, sometimes Casey talks know. about food and wine, and we get... All right. <laughs> yes. Let's so, go so back. There are challenges Let's with go cool back. weather. Yeah. But we're working with it, rather than trying to mask it and making yeah. a wine that's... It wasn't warm enough. That's right. <laughs> so There you go. We're, we're, we're accentuating the... the characteristics of the grapes and wines that are caused by a cool climate rather so than trying to hide them. You're, are you planting different grapes then? Absolutely. Yes. And did it take a while to figure that out? 25 years. Wow. Seems reasonable. Yeah, entirely. I think. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to talk a little bit about uh, like it takes guts to pursue this, the, the actual style of the place that you're in. Because, you know, when you start and Burgundy's doing this and Bordeaux's doing that and everybody has these visions that they're going to make the same wine. But the reality is, is that you have to make the wine from the place that you live in. So you can't really do anything until that reality, <laughs> till that sets into your mindset. And once, once you accept your terroir, I think then you can really take off. And I think, you know, one of the things that people talk about Unsworth uh, in the tasting I'm in is that they reflect the place they come from, which is, you know, it's, I don't think there's a better accolade for wines than that. Uh, anyways, no. that's a compliment. You don't have to say anything. Uh, let's appreciate talk about, that. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk about the wine that you brought in today, because we so we we don't run out of time. So this is the Charme de Lille. Uh, tell us a little bit about this sparkling wine and why you're making it and what the philosophy is, and uh, give our listeners uh, the heads up. And how long have you been making it? Uh, the project started about four years ago. Uh, Daniel, from the very beginning, when we first got together at the beginning of Unsworth in 2000, and 
2010, I guess the end of 2010, um, expressed to me the interest in making sparkling wine in the island because of our climate and felt we could do a good job of it and uh, was very interested in the Charmat method, the tank method, uh, as well as the traditional method. But um, And it certainly piqued my interest. Uh, by the time we'd done the research uh, to try and get it going and then we had a little bit of equipment issues and we've had packaging issues and all that. So really it's only been on the market about 18 months and, um, and doing really well it seems to... Uh, have found a niche uh, and you know Daniel you can talk a little more about uh, how we make it but um, there's not too many people making it this way in this part of the world so but from what I understand there are only two wineries in British Columbia making wine like this Dunsworth and Sto making a Prosecco style Prosecco style yes Charmat. that's right so I believe Unsworth is is doing it and uh, uh, Stoneboat and they're doing Stone a Stoneboat yeah. that's too. right yeah. And it's so popular, Prosecco. It's, it's, they say they're running out of it. I, I, from what I understand, they are. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. We are, too. <laughs> yeah, we are, too. We can barely keep it in stock. So this wine, this is the 20, uh, is it 2014, I think? Yes. Or, yeah. This is 2015. This is 2015. 2015. Yeah. Right. So you've had a little change in the variety. So it's quite interesting what the wine's made from. Tell us a little bit about the makeup of the wine. Well, it's it's been a natural progression as our vineyard comes on full stream. Yeah. We've we've had the volumes we've had to work with, but in 2015, I, it was our first opportunity to work with uh, a, enough volume to create exactly the balance we wanted. Okay. So the, the majority of the wine is Pinot Gris. And Pinot Noir, whole mm -hmm. cluster pressed, yep. first fraction. So, the, so it's the first fraction of the Pinot Gris and Pinot Noir. So it, it made as a, though I were about to make a traditional, right. And twenty, the, the remaining twenty percent is a blend of Sauvignon and Amiel, both of which are Blattner varieties. Sauvignon and Amiel. Yeah, yeah. So to our listeners, they they are bizarre varieties. Yes. What, what do they bring to the blend? Those two varieties. Oh, goodness. Uh, em Emil is a little bit more fragrant. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in not like a muscat, but one might be fooled. Okay. There are, there are no muscat genetics. And Sauvignette is 95 plus percent Cabernet Sauvignon in genetics. Wow. Which is pretty amazing. So yeah. in, it, yes. in its raw form, in a, a slightly less ripe. You'd hit it right on the money if you said, this smells and tastes like a Sauvignon Blanc. But when it's extremely ripe, it's a little bit more fruity, a lot of pear. But, yeah. Well, the wine is delicious. The balance is amazing. The, you know, the, there's a tension with the acidity, but there's, there's enough fruit to, so that you're not scared off by the acidity either. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would mention Prosecco. I think the wine is more interesting than a Prosecco. Than a, Prosecco. a little bit more complex. And what is the cost of this wine? It's free. All wines are free, Casey. <laughs> yes, we wish they were. Yeah. The cost is about $100, but we sell it for 23 <laughs> Oh, exactly. <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever heard. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> because it's expensive to make a sparkling wine. It is. It's... Uh, more you know, expensive. The, the, equip, or the, the packaging is expensive. The, it has to stand up to. Th yeah. This is, has pretty much the same pressure as a traditional, about six bar. Yep. So, so uh, the bottle, everything costs yeah, a few we bucks. Yeah, we can't out on that. And, and uh, does yeah. it take longer in the vineyard? Uh, no, the uh, the growing, we um, of course, we don't want too high of uh, uh, alcohol percentage, so we're careful. But that's not usually an issue on the island as a rule. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, it's actually perfect for growing this style of uh, sparkling wine. What uh, a little bit about Unsworth now? What's the production, the current production in Unsworth, and what are the what are the main wines that are coming out of the winery that people will see on shelves in shelves uh, and across British Columbia? Okay, well, in the production-wise, uh, partly because we, we designed to increase a little bit, but also the uh, the vineyards are getting a little more mature and mm -hmm. perfect spring. We had lots of. Uh, a very good yield out of all the vineyards, including yeah. our own. So uh, we're uh, pretty close to 8,000 cases from the 2015 vintage. Uh, we're concentrating Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris, and of course the Pinot Noir is red wine and the sparkling wine sure. and rosé. Yep. Uh, and the Pinot Gris, which is what we've had since day one. Mm -hmm. And then that makes up about uh, probably 60%. 
And then the balance are these Blattner hybrids mm -hmm. that are pretty much only found where we are on the island and a little bit in uh, Fraser Valley. Uh, so our white blend Allegro, we've uh, yep. uh, stepped that up in production quite a bit. So uh, a lot of these wines were sold out very quickly last year. So I think we've um, hopefully balanced is that it, out. Yeah, like is there is there sort of a supply of Unsworth that's going to get off the island? Is that part of the plan too? Or it, I it, mean, I know you're happy to sell everything right away if you can, I guess. But yeah. No, uh, yes, we're we're looking, well, we're already in Vancouver and have been since the beginning, but yeah. uh, we plan to grow this area more, and we, we're also looking far afield as are others, but more, not that we have the production today or mm -hmm. the need, but uh, just trying to stay with the curve. And uh, an experience for people to come and visit the winery? Is that possible in, uh, on the island? It certainly is. We've, yeah. uh, we experienced a, a great deal of... Uh, increase in uh, traffic this past year but we have a, a really well received restaurant that uh, yeah. we were lucky enough to win a, a Vancouver magazine award last year oh and, wow uh, that helps yeah that helps yeah. and um, great food paired with our wines so we have quite an experience there and um, if uh, one of us are there which we usually are the <laughs> people will get personalized tours and I know there's been some work uh, happening with Appalachians in British Columbia. I know you guys were in some of the early meetings. I don't know whether you're still in the meetings, but is there is there hope for uh, maybe for an Appalachian for Cowichan or Vancouver Island? Or I don't know how you see that. but uh, Yeah, I've been to the meetings, and uh, there have been a few uh, difficulties trying to get everybody on board, on board yeah. uh, but uh, I believe there's a meeting coming up next week that hopefully uh, can we just get them all on board on, right and yeah get on with it cause get her done right so I say send them each a bottle of your wine <laughs> they're sparkling I say I'll come into that meeting for 10 minutes and let's just get it done so yeah. we can get on with more important stuff but exactly. it would be nice to have a little appellation we could count on mm -hmm. from from the island no, I agree it should be great uh, well gentlemen great to taste this wine delicious like actually Super wine. Yeah, very First cool. class. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Thank you. This wine, I'd love to take this wine to London and just serve it blind to a bunch of people and and leave the room uh, and just leave them wondering what it is. It's really a sensational bottle. Great. Thanks for Thank sharing you. that. And people can come by and see at the Wine Festival. If you're coming down uh, tomorrow night, Friday or Saturday, you can visit the booth and uh, have a chat with them and talk about Vancouver Island wines, what we're doing. Great. Thank you very much for having yeah, us. Yeah, great to have you. Thank and you. that's Unsworth. Unsworth uh, Vineyards, and we've been tasting the Charme de Lille, which sells for somewhere between 23 and probably $28 uh, in the Lower Mainland. You find it in private wine shops or uh, better restaurants, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Or buy direct at the winery if you're in uh, on Vancouver Island. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks so much. We are uh, going to take a quick break. We are at the 22nd, no, I'm just seeing if you're paying attention, 38th Vancouver International Wine Festival. Italy is the theme. There's 155 wineries in the room and a lot of wine to taste. I think, Casey, you should start in the A's and just go to the Z's. I think so. I'm Tony Gismondi. I'm Casey Wilson. We'll be right back. Best of Food and Wine on CL 650.